on when it comes to like jobs and money and girlfriends amongst the girlfriends you can see the differences between who has money and who doesn't regarding who has access to things like therapy because several times Joan goes to see goes to a therapist um because she can afford it Tony also can afford it and chimes in with Joan and goes at the same time obviously not for the best reasons but they end up going and you see like the divide you can see how money really allows you to have access to these things that people need so I'd say someone like Maya would have needed therapy for what she was going through with Darnell at one point um I'd say someone definitely like Lynn who's like literally she's lost <laughs> she's very lost up until like a certain point in seasons afterwards she doesn't know what she's doing she's got like five degrees but she's actually leeching off everyone um I think they call it a mooch I'm not putting herself to good use just very much flouncy bouncy around and she seemed like she needed some sort of therapy some sort of grounding but Lynn was unemployed for most of the time or on minimum wage and she wasn't earning a lot so she couldn't access those things so we see how it's a reflection on even nowadays people that need therapy are usually the people that are less fortunate and they can't access those things because they haven't got the means to or there's a stigma around going to therapy but someone like Joan and Tony most of maybe some of their friends outside of the girlfriends are um I don't I can't speak for every white person but I feel like there must be some sort of there must be less of a stigma around therapy <clears throat> For non-black people and if they're hanging out with those kind of people at work in the corporate spaces in the corporate world going to therapy is a normal thing so because William went to therapy it's a normal thing for them so it's also like the circles that you run in that um, determine whether you have access to these things or think you're allowed to have access to these things or if these things are good so let's talk about Tony's faith because I think it was season two after Tony and Jones like massive spat like they just kept doing things to each other that just cause them to be like, you know, I can't do this. Like, I think there was a Halloween party and Joni, Joni? <laughs> Tony, basically Greg had tried to get back at Tony and pretended to get back with her like, oh babe, I want you back, this is that. Got a girl around to cheat with as Tony walked in. Tony like came crying to Joan's house on good, they want like, they want on good terms. Tony like was like I have to go to Joan's house like Joan's house is very much so like, the hub of girlfriends like a lot of scenes take place at Joan's house a lot of their mother's meetings take place at Joan's house on the couch and Tony had no one to turn to she came to Joan's house her family don't live here they live in Fresno and Joan was like I want to see you like you need to cry somewhere else like jo Joan was very much setting up her boundaries and then Tony ends up going to church and the other girls convinced, I think they convinced Joan to come with them and be like, Tony's gonna be there, da 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 da. And I think it was Donnie McClurkin. McClurkin? He's like a famous um, gospel singer and he's like leading the service and Tony's like crying in the pew. And then um, I think Joan like doesn't wanna sit with Maya Lynn and Tony, so she like goes over somewhere else. She's like, well, type thing. And it's like, well, we're in church, but I don't have to sit next to you type thing. Then Tony like, I think there's an altar call and Tony goes to the front and she's like crying and she's like, Lord, like, I'm tired, like, do you get what I mean? Like, you know that, you know when you're like, you're wrecked by the spirit type thing. And obviously Joan gets emotional, goes up and like, they all, they all cry with her at the front and then T Tony has like this spiritual awakening almost. So like the next few episodes after that, she's like, girl, I'm saved. Like, everything she does, she's like, girl, I'm saved. I can't do that. Girl, I'm saved. I can't do that. Girl, I'm saved. Da -da -da -da. I'm a Christian. I can't do that. But then that kind of dies down. Like, Tony doesn't continue to, to, I don't want to say to be a Christian, but she doesn't make it known as much as she did when she first gives her life or whatever she did at the altar. It doesn't carry on. And I thought that was very like, hmm. After she gave her life to God in season two, her faith almost dwindled. And it just seemed very spur the moment and very emotional. Like a lot of people go to church and go to like these, events like their friends invite them around to events and it's like it's very emotional and like the spirit is moving and the music sounds good and everything is like oh my gosh like I, I need to go to the front I need to cry I need to like fall I need the pastor to touch my head and I fall down I need to be you know and it's like that's all well and good but if it's not genuine and it's not if you take away the emotion and the good music and the atmosphere and the fact everyone's crying and everyone's hands up are you really like like are you really finding a connection there are you really like 
being moved to give your life. Maybe it was her last resort to to show Joan how much she wanted to change and be her friend. It's like, listen, I'm ready to like give my life to Christ for this girl. A lot of people do things for other people, so it's like, oh, to keep my friends happy or to keep my man happy or my girlfriend happy, I'm gonna give my life, but it's not for you. Like, it's not authentic for you. Obviously, Tony is a fictional character, but I think the scene itself was actually very authentic. A lot of people do that. Like, I've been like that before. When I go to church, and it's like, oh, it's all emotional, and I'm like, I'm gonna start fresh again, like, it's a new me when I leave this church. Like, I'm throwing everything away, and I'm, like, literally gonna become a nun. And, but it's like, no, like, that kind of fire does dwindle if you don't keep at it and you don't actually make, you're not intentional, not everything's emotional when it comes to faith. Tony has quite a strained relationship with her family, especially her mum. Her mum was an alcoholic. Um, her sister and her don't get along at all. <laughs> not at all. I forgot her sister's name, I'm sorry. But her and her sister do not get along. And we. it, found, it turns out that her sister kind of resents Tony for never saying thank you because while her mum was being an alcoholic her sister would take a lot of the reins and look after Tony essentially bring Tony up and Tony basically just said when she got when she was old enough and when she got her education she was like peace out y'all I'm going to LA like I'm out like I'm going to Beverly Hills type thing and it's like her sister was her sister stayed in Fresno her sister is a um retail assistant and like somewhere like Walmart and she stayed there in Fresno and she's happy with her job and it's kind of like well where's my thanks like mum's okay now but I really held it down and they have like that kind of heart to heart when um Tony goes to visit in Fresno I think her mum starts drinking again and um yeah Tony goes to visit and her sister's like all I wanted was a thank you and Tony's like thank you like I actually mean it thank you um the only thing is with Tony yeah I can say is that she only deeps things and she only she only says sorry or she only is very like she only wakes up when things are very dire like sometimes you need to have she's I don't think she's emotionally intelligent that's one thing about it like a lot of people always call always um a lot of emotional unintelligent is always associated with men in relationships romantic relationships but in Tony's familial relationships and her um platonic friendships she's not emotionally intelligent like she can't see when it's like time to be like oh let me say sorry or let me be sensitive in the situation like she can't read the room which is a very self-absorbed very selfish very narcissistic thing to do anyway she ends up saying sorry to her sister so when it comes to men tony never lowered her standards except for greg so let's get into it greg was an artist he wasn't earning that much um when it comes to creative professions a lot of the time it's freelance a lot of the time um you wait you're waiting for a breakthrough and a lot of the stuff you do is by yourself you haven't got an agent or stuff like that at first anyway so greg had he was a painter he was an artist and he hadn't made his big break yet and tony this was the guy that tony was very much so in love with like tony loved Greg and it was a thing where she was conflicted hence why she cheated on him and got engaged with the other guy I think he was a doctor um something like that he was just very rich and she got engaged to him and she was like flashing her ring but she's like but I love Greg and it's like girl but it's like her heart is in it with Greg but she knows her standards are I want this certain lifestyle I want this car I want this house I want to be able to be bought gifts like uh, she says, well, her, I think one of her famous lines is, I don't buy jewellery, I get given jewellery. So it's like, Greg can't give her that, but she loves him, but she wants a lifestyle. And Tony is like, she wants what she wants, as we said in the beginning. So she cheated. When she dated Todd, like, um, Todd was very much short. He was short, shorter than her. Um, he's white. And he's Jewish. This is like the last person I would have seen Tony with, like a short white man. But um, I guess the money drew her. Cool. Let's get into... The thing is that Tony even almost allowed... She lowered her stance to the point where she was almost going to renounce her faith and her beliefs in order for um, her and Todd not to go to court over Morgan because him and her were going to divorce and Todd was like well if you let us 
if you let my family like um baptize her as a jew then we can sort things out but uh, at the last minute tony was like no no i can't do this like but she almost did and it just shows how like how far she was willing to go to her standards even though she's like so uppity and so i only want the best let's talk about tony now in regards to her girlfriends so tony claims to be joan's best friend when they're in the group setting especially in the first few seasons tony's very like very much so joan's my best friend joan's my best friend she says it a lot but it's like your actions and your words are not matching sweetie like they are not matching at all and um she just treats joan really badly like she's very draining when tony's car is getting repossessed and i think that like, she's losing a lot of money she just calls joan round like joan i used to be my lawyer or now does joan even do that kind of law like i don't even think so um i don't think joan's even her lawyer but it's just like she's very controlling very needy very manipulative mainly towards joan and it's the thing where she she's the type of person that target certain people like she knows that she can't be all that to Maya because Maya will not have it if you've watched girlfriends you know but she feels very comfortable to that to Joan her and Lynn haven't got the best the closest relationship so we can't even use that but the people she interacts with the most are Joan and Maya and she would never with Maya but Joan's very much so a pushover and she knows this whole best friend Taiwan, the fact they have history and they have this whole stretch of time behind them too in terms of friendship means that whatever I do, Joan's got me, whatever I do, Joan's gonna come through. No, like at one point Joan had enough and Joan put herself first and Tony got really upset and ends up actually moving away from um, California to New York. She relocates without another word to Joan and it's like, and that's the last we see of Tony. And in real life, um, it's just that um, Jill Marie, who's a real actress, uh, she just didn't want to renew her contract with whoever like produced it. But in the show, it's that Tony just basically Joan couldn't make Tony's um, custody hearing for Morgan because Joan was like drunk, like she was hungover. But Tony was like, nah, like that was the last straw. But it's like, sis, like I get this is a very important day, but. There have been many last straws that Joan could have had with you, that you've done worse, you tried to sleep with her man, you slapped her on holiday, like, you've done a lot, like, I can't remember other things, but she's done a lot, you guys need to watch Girlfriend. She's very mean to Joan as well, and it's like, but I think in the back of her head, she's like, well, Joan can take it, or, yeah, we always fight, type thing, we always fight, like, um, when Joan tries to break up with Tony, <laughs> essentially, and go to therapy, Tony, like, books the same session, she's like, okay, we're gonna do this together, because you're not breaking up with me, but it's like, you treat me so terribly but you want me around and I think a lot of these attributes are only made serious when girls go through this with men and it's like no you need to wake up and see that a lot of your friends are at treating you like how your boyfriend does but you're sick of your man but you're quick to cut off your girl. Uh, Joan and Tony needed to outgrow each other they had to outgrow each other like it had to be even though it happened so abruptly and in like a not a nice closure it wasn't like you know what we're not good for each other let's move on like it was very much so like one of them was done and it was like completely kaput but sometimes it goes that way and that's what i love about girlfriend girlfriends is that it's so relatable like the how fast paced things happen and how people literally can turn on you one day after you've been through so much it's like well we could have got over this custody hearing thing but you decided to just cut so it's like, it's very relatable. It's like, I'm very invested. When I was watching Girlfriends, I was very invested. I'm not even done yet, so I don't even know. Anyway. <laughs> what can we learn from Tony Childs? We can learn that you can come from nothing and make something for yourself, especially as a black woman in the Western world. A dark skinned black woman at that. Tony was like, you listen, I don't mind my environment. I don't want to grow up to be like mum and dad or like my sister which is not always a bad thing because everyone's different maybe they're comfortable doing what they're doing I would be comfortable doing this so I'm about to go and get my education I'm about to go make money for myself and I'm about to go and find a man who has his own money too we can come together and live the life that we that we want Tony knew what she deserved Tony knew her worth like she knew she deserved based on her own assets based on her as a person full stop whether she had an education whether she worked on real estate or not, whether she wore the latest designer all the time, she knew she deserved top tier men and she was not going to settle, even though she did, but <laughs> even, um, figuratively. 
lastly, I think that Tony Childs should be celebrated for being bougie, for liking nice things as a dark skinned black woman because a lot of the time we are told oh we can't do this we're not allowed to do this oh you can't wear blonde hair or you can't wear all this makeup or you can't do these kind of things or why is she wearing designer but when people that aren't black do that kind of stuff no one really questions it wanting to uphold a certain lifestyle should not be a crime as a black woman <laughs> like why how can skin color decide whether i like things like nice things or not that wasn't a rhetorical question by the way, though. that's real, like why does my skin colour or the shade of my skin colour determine if I can like, like nice things or not or want wealthy men or want um, men that are doing something for themselves. Oh, that was my commentary on Tony Childs. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys had some similar points to mine. If I missed anything out and you guys have any other things to comment about Tony, please leave it down below in the comments. Let's have a discussion. Um... Next I'm going to be doing, next I'm going to be doing Maya, I'm going to be doing Maya Wilkes next and I'm going to drop one of these every Friday so it's going to be a four week um, series and I'm going to do my research and I'm going to try and be better each time I do this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I'll see you next time when we talk about Maya. Like, comment and subscribe, share this video with your friends, your family, I'll see you guys next time.